Ever since its inception in 1959, the National Aerospace Laboratories, NAL, Bangalore, has been working incessantly towards building a profound civil aviation sector in India. Earlier called the National Aeronautics Laboratory, the name was changed to National Aerospace Laboratories to reflect also the prime role it is playing in the Indian Space Program and its multidisciplinary activities and global positioning. It is the nation's only civil aerospace organization with such a high level of competence and is dedicated to development of indigenous aerospace technologies. CSIR NALS technologies are regarded worldwide for their sophistication and effectiveness. Its test facilities are the best in the nation. All the laboratories of CSIR NAL are manned by highly specialized teams known for their tremendous scientific and technological skills and workmanship. In its more than 50 years of existence, CSIR NAL has made remarkable contributions to a plethora of aerospace programs such as civil and military aircraft development programs, space program, engine development programs, defense and strategic programs of the country and has also contributed to vital industrial and societal outputs. As a unit of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, Apart from running its aerospace programs, CSIR NAL has also made significant contributions such as working with smart materials, parallel processing, advanced flow diagnostics, airport instrumentation, and harnessing of solar and wind energy. Despite several odds, CSIR NAL has continued its R&D activities to meet virtually all facets of aeronautics like theoretical and experimental aerodynamics, structures, materials, propulsion, electronics and systems. By the mid-1970s, CSIR NAL had emerged as one of the major actors on the Indian aeronautical scene. It was recognized as one of CSIR's best managed national laboratories, undertaking over a hundred high science, high technology R&D projects in aerospace. Unfortunately, a slump followed in the Indian civil aviation industry in the same decade. Despite the proven potential to go ahead, the aviation industry suffered from sluggishness and inactivity. This phase in the Indian aviation history is often referred to as a very attractive and well-decked bride but with nowhere to go. CSIR NAL took its initial steps towards development of civil aircraft in the 1980s and the maiden effort was to wet hands in building and flying the light canard research aircraft LCRA after procuring drawings and raw materials from the USA. Soon, CSIR NAL had become a major national player in development of aerospace technologies. Nineteen nineties happened to be one of the most happening decades for NAL as major initiatives were taken and more professionalism was instilled among its ranks. As a harbinger of civil aviation design and development in the country, CSIR NAL developed the Hansa two-seater trainer aircraft, which has gained huge popularity in different flying clubs in India. It has also attracted a lot of international attention and is all set to make its mark in the international market. With its core resource base of around 330 full-time aerospace R&D professionals with long experience and success in front-ranking aerospace research and proven facilities, CSIR NAL embarked upon the designing of Saras, initially modeled as a 14-seater multi-role light transport aircraft. Saras made its first historic flight on 29th of May 2004 from HAL Airport, Bangalore, in the presence of the then Honorable Minister of State for Science and Technology and Ocean Development, Sri Kapil Sibbal. This historic day marked a significant leap forward for India in the sphere of civil aeronautics. But the day didn't come easy. The path to this success was full of obstacles, some of which even threatened to stall the project for good. The project began in 1991 as a collaboration with Russia, but financial problems forced it to drop out early in the project. 
so the job was now completely dependent upon the acumen and skills of the research and development professionals of CSIR NAL. The difficulties in realizing the project were further accentuated by the US imposed sanctions on India in 1998 following the nuclear tests in Pokhran. But the professionals at NAL were up to the task. Bit by bit they consolidated their research and development efforts with the result that the first SARS aircraft, also called PT-1, was ready to rule the skies by the middle of 2004. SARS-1 or PT-1 has the distinction of being one of the few aircraft to make use of pusher propeller configuration. The sophisticated technologies in SARS allow it to perform better compared to other similar designs. The SARS engine is chosen to meet stringent Federal Aviation Regulations 25 or simply FAR 25 climb gradient requirements under conditions of one engine failure. The maiden flight of SARS was a perfect one and its novel model and design earned a tremendous critical acclaim from national and international quarters. SARS is designed to take off and land on short semi-prepared runways. It is equipped with advanced design features like modern state-of-the-art avionics, carbon fiber composite control surfaces, low drag wing and low cabin noise because of rear-mounted turboprop engines in pusher propeller configuration. SARS is capable of flying up to a maximum speed of 550 km per hour up to a cruise altitude of 9 km. It being of lightweight makes SARS one of the most attractive aircraft for civil aviation. The secret of its lightweight lies in the use of composites rather than metals, nearly a third by weight. SARS wing and empennage airframe are made of carbon composites. In addition, composite control surfaces help to keep the aircraft light. Importantly, composite surfaces are less prone to fatigue and corrosion, hence resulting in low maintenance parts count. The success of SARS PT-1 led to the designing and production of SARS-2 or PT-2. PT-2 was fitted with a more powerful engine, PT-6A67A of 1200 horsepower class with new propellers of larger diameter. This was specifically done to provide sufficient margin in climb performance to meet the FAR 25 requirements. After initial success, unfortunately, the PT-2 crashed in 2009, resulting in the loss of lives of crew members. However, the crash was not caused by any technical defects. It was rather attributed to engine relight procedures, as per DGCA investigation report. I am happy to say that DGCA has uh, indicated in their report that there are no major design or maintenance flaws in the aircraft and uh, we have taken now action to recover and put the program back on its um, rails. The GC has suggested some improvements in design and we are taking the help of some international agencies, reputed ones, the Piaggio Aerospace in Italy for the nacelle redesign and as well as MDB from Russia under the ILTP program. MDB being the organization with which we started the SARS uh, program in early 1990s. They are helping us with uh, improvements in, in some of the design deficiencies aspects as well as in the flight testing of this aircraft so that we can speed up, speed up the flight testing activity uh, leading to certification of the aircraft. The, the production standard aircraft is under development right now. We are just uh, waiting for the production organization clearance from DGCA under the new CAR 21 regulations. As soon as that is given, we will continue with the production activity. This is the aircraft which will be delivered to the Indian Air Force who, is, uh, who will be our launch customer. And initially the Air Force has uh, indicated a requirement of 15 aircraft in this uh, basic version. And uh, they also are uh, planning to procure another 30 in uh, different versions like cargo carrier and uh, <coughs> executive aircraft. So like the different versions are being talked of. So this uh, is the plan that we have discussed also with uh, the production agency. HAL Kanpur has come forward to be the production agency for these uh, 
for these aircraft. They will produce these aircraft and deliver to the Indian Air Force. And in fact, we have uh, finalized an MOU for the production of this uh, aircraft with uh, HAL. And very shortly, we'll be going to sign this con uh, MOU between HAL and uh, CSR NAL. And now, the SARS-3 or PT-3 development project has been taken up. The R&D professionals and designers are working tirelessly to make it a definite success. Notable features of PT-3 would include reduction in structural weight and a modern digital cockpit display. The project has already earned sufficient acclaim and both production industry and potential users are looking forward to its launch. Novelties and innovation continue at CSIR NAL with the overall objective of making civil aeronautics profitable, user-friendly and economically viable for passengers. The planning and development of NM5 by CSIR NAL is an expression of this resolve. NM5 is a multi-role, multi-mission aircraft being developed by CSIR NAL in collaboration with Mahindra Aerospace Private Limited. It is a five-seater general aviation aircraft and an upgradation of the Hansa 3 aircraft. NM5 has been completely designed and developed by CSIR NAL and Mahindra Aerospace Private Limited on a 50-50 partnership basis. Its multi-purpose utilization is bound to make it a tremendous commercial success as it can be used as a trainer aircraft for transporting cargo, medical evacuation, tourism, VIP travel, pilot training and for several other applications. What we have is a partnership with the National Aerospace Laboratories to develop a five-seat aircraft which we call the NM5 and you can see a model of the airplane right here. What this represents is the first public-private partnership in aeronautics in India and we are quite privileged to be a partner with NAL in this project. What we see this as a uh, first of many such projects to come and what we think is the good thing about this is that the public sector has built up a lot of capability and understanding which the private sector can then look to commercialize in a joint venture or a partnership form. Uh, when you talk about the aircraft industry on one side, the system engineering, system design, the subsystem identification, integration, testing, flight testing, uh, all this goes with that. And the host of avionics, which is required for monitoring the performance, uh, giving the directions, uh, monitoring the flight, and uh, stabilizing the flight, and so on. So all this will lead to a large number of industries with uh, capabilities taking on the role of uh, subsystem providers, NAL taking the role of a system integrator, and perhaps the industry taking the role of a production unit. So all this can be implemented through this national uh, civil aircraft program. We are in the process of uh, finalizing a configuration for such an aircraft. When you talk about the fuel efficient engine, we want to have to make a survey of uh, available systems in the market and uh, con uh, converge on a suitable engine and remaining uh, with respect to the airframe, uh, the materials to be used, advanced materials to be used, we can reduce the mass fraction and uh, modern avionics, how it can be integrated and so on. These studies are being carried out and we hope that uh, within the next few months, we will come out with a configuration and uh, identify a development plan involving the participation of uh, Indian industries and also uh, uh, trying to estimate the time frame and the, the cost involved in developing the infrastructure for the in initial phase of development as well as the further mass production of the system. So this report is expected to be submitted to the government by <clears throat> before middle of next year and we hope that will lead to the formation of a joint venture which will undertake the development of the civil aviation, uh, civilian aircraft system in the country. Uh, the, we have got a strong team uh, which is assembled at NAL, a uh, multidisciplinary team who can address almost all the design issues and also we are in uh, having the advice of senior members from industry and government uh, guiding this program. CSIR NAL is now a major civil aeronautics development center of the nation and is acknowledged accordingly. Its civil aeronautics and aerospace research is continuing with even greater zeal and determination. CSIR NAL is all set to make a mark in the international aerospace scene as well. Its design and development activities have earned a lot of respect and admiration both within and outside the country. 
with new ventures and bigger projects on the anvil and with its partners both in the public and private sectors playing important roles. CSIR now is on the threshold of even greater glory and success.